Hey, I'm Pastor Andrew Ebanks, lead pastor at the Agape Family Worship Center. We pray this message and resource will stir up your affections for Jesus and encourage you in your calling. Use this resource in conjunction with you belonging to a local church that is helping to shape and shepherd you in Jesus Christ. If these resources bless you, would you consider giving back to us here at Agape? You can visit us at agapekman.ky slash giving to see how you can do that. Again, we pray this blesses, encourages, and grows you in your love for Jesus Christ. Privilege for me to be in the house of the Lord today because he has a word for us, every single one of us. I just want to thank Pastor Andrew for asking me to share the word. It's always a privilege for me to share and to bring glory to God. Let us pray. Father God, I just want to thank you today. We thank you that you are in our midst. We thank you that you are the one who goes before us and you make the way clear. Today, Lord, I pray that you'll open our ears, open our eyes, open our hearts to receive from you. Lord, we come with expectancy. Expectancy. We want to receive from you today, Lord, because your name and your name alone will be glorified in this house, in this time, in this season, in this moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I have been sharing this message about crazy faith. You remember the last two messages, messages I did? It was about crazy faith. And today, the Lord just still have me parked there. I just cannot move, and I just want to be obedient. Crazy, crazy faith. Let us turn our Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel 37, and I'll be reading from verse 1 to 6. And I'll start. I'm not hearing any pages moving. I guess you all have electronic stuff. <laughs> and it says, The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out into the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by all of them around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed, they were very dry. Please keep that in mind. They were very dry. Verse 3, And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O Lord, you know. Verse 4. And again he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. I will put sinew, sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. I'm going to read verse 3 from um, the NIV version, and it says, he asked me, son of man, can these bones live? And I said, sovereign Lord, you know all things. And as I've said before, I've entitled my message, Crazy Faith. Can these bones live? This was a time when um, Ezekiel had a vision from the Lord. And I will go into it momentarily. But before I do that, I have some pictures to show you. 
three pictures. All right, we can stay there for a while. I don't know if you remember the time when I spoke about being on the boat, going to the Brack, from Cayman Brack over to Little Cayman, and my heart was in my mouth because that boat was going so fast, right? The, when I went there, we got a tour. A friend of Shaman took us on a little tour, and we went like on a dock, and you see that little bit of spurt of um, green thing coming up there? What she said to us is that when, every, when it's dry, when it's drought, no rain, everything is dry. Everything. And please go to the next one. If you see there now, a lot of water. That means rain came. Rain came. And whenever it rains, that simply means that you're going to have growth. The flowers, the trees, the plants will grow. Next. And you see that now? You see you have more greenery. The trees are, are growing bigger and getting green. So when everything is dry, no water, nothing, everything will stop growing. And I said to myself, at least it was my wife who, who said to me, there goes a message. And I said, yes. Can these bones live when everything is down, when everything is dry? Can it spring again? Can it grow again? I recognize that this message is for all of us. Because over the past two years, we have been going. We have been going. Some of us are tired. We are weary. We're asking questions. Lord, why? Is this thing going to end? We have a lot of questions. I ask myself, I'm going day by day by day by day, and I'm saying, will this ever end? And it has brought a lot of stress on a lot of people. And if we are honest enough, we can say, yes, it has affected me. It has affected the entire world. Whatever is going on these days, it is a stressful time to live in. But God is saying to you this morning, can these bones live? Can you live during all of this that's happening? It is challenging. But yes, he said in his word, he will never leave us. And he will never, ever forsake us. We watch the news. The American news. And we hear that recession might be coming. And I mean, think about it. It's possible because this pandemic has affected the entire world. Some way and in some form, it has affected every single one of us sitting here today. You're not exempted. None of us are exempted. So when we see these things, the gas price is rising daily. Every day you go to the gas pump, you're feeling it. To import something, you're feeling it because all the, 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 the cargo and everything that's coming in, it is getting more and more costly to, to ship something here. You don't believe me? Try and ship something. Go on eBay. Order something. And it's like the shipping fees and all those fees are like tripled. So we are all affected, and that is why when you go to the supermarket, you will realize inflation is very... And, it's key, and it just keeps going, it just keeps going. You go to the supermarket and the, the normal things, the basic things that you, you, you need, it's like the price is doubled and you're asking yourself, why, what is going on? Can we live? Can these bones live? And I'm here to assure you this morning, yes, they can live. Because God is with us. He, God is with us. Let me give you a background on um, this, script, this um, text. Ezekiel was in exile from Judah and Babylon before the final fall of Jerusalem. He was both a priest and a prophet. 
He's not only, he not only prophesied about the judgment that Judah would face, but also prophesied how God would restore his people according to his covenant promises. He's a covenant-keeping God, and he's a covenant-making God. The promises that he make, he will do. There's no promise that God has made to you that he will not bring it to pass. It may not be the, right, the timing that you expect it, but he's going to do it. I continue. And as Ezekiel was taken in the vision, because he had a vision, the vision of dry bones, God instructed him to prophesy to the bones. God instructed Ezekiel to, bring, to, to begin prophesying again. As a prophet prophesied, the, resurrec the resurrected bodies came to life. The word of God, and listen to this, the word of God. The word of God was, very, was the very breath of life that these once dead bodies needed to hear to come back to life. In studying this text, I realized some phrases here, and I will point them out to you. The first one is that the valley was full of dry bones. Full of dry bones. Okay, so not just a few bones, but lots of bones. These bones were obviously, these bones obviously denied proper burial. It's like an army. They were fighting. And these soldiers died. And as the scripture says, there were many. And they died. And they apparently, no one buried them. They, just, they were just left there, decomposed. And then left to rot. And then the bones were the things that were left. Two, indeed they were very dry. Apart from their presence in a living body, bones are dead. Dry bones are not only dead, yet when something has been dead for so long, we give up hope that it will ever live again. When you're eating, let, let's take it home now. In, in, um, in Jamaica, when we normally have dogs, we have dogs outside. So what we would do when we're eating a bone, chicken bone, oxtail, whatever it is, would give the dogs a bone, especially oxtail. Because the dogs can really chew it all the way through. Chicken bones, easy. Ox still, it will be there, and they ch want to try a thing and two, but they will never ever devour it. And you go back a couple days, and you realize the bones are dry, extremely dry, because they have been there for so long. And that's a picture Ezekiel was saying that in the vision, the bones were very dry, so there is no hope that these bones will ever live. Number three, before I go to number three, in other, in other words, it's not only a bad situation, but it's, it's bad. It's been bad for a long time. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where it's going for so long. You've been praying, and you pray, and you pray, and nothing seems to be changing because it's there for a long time. And it's as if there is no hope. Number three. Can these bones live? That's a question God was asking Ezekiel. One might hope that recently dead corpse might sh somehow resuscitate. No one hopes that the, these scattered bones, detached bones might live. Admirably, Ezekiel responded to God's question with the only hope that he could found, saying, O oh Lord, you know. O oh Lord, you know. Ezekiel had no hope that the bones, he had no hope in the bones, 
but he did have hope in God. Ezekiel was confident that God knew. It's crazy to believe that these bones will ever live again. That's a crazy thing, and that's why I came up with this topic, crazy faith. How is it that the bones are dead for so long? The bones are all detached. And you're gonna, God is going to ask him, can these bones live? Can these bones live? What to do when life gets crazy? What do you do? When you are worn out, tired, discouraged, overwhelmed, when things have not gone well, when you are, and if not, at the end of your rope. Some of you today are at the end of your rope. You're about to give up. You're about to say, Lord, it doesn't make any sense to go on. But God is saying to you this morning, these bones can live. The situation can change. We just have to put our hope in him. I would propose to you today, increase your faith. Increase your faith and pray, Lord, increase my faith. Habakkuk 2 and verse 4b says, But the just shall live by his faith. We all have to live by our faith. I cannot live off my wife's faith. I cannot live off my brother's faith. I cannot live off my mother's faith. We all, he said, the just shall live by his faith. And that is why I'm encouraging you today, increase your faith. It's going to be a crazy faith. Science will say this will never happen. People around you will say this will never happen. But we have to go above that, increase our faith. It doesn't matter what you say. But whose report will you believe? Will you believe the report of the Lord? The doctors sometimes tell us, this is what it is. But God has a last say. He knows best. His time in his key, and he knows best. God has been constantly speaking to us about faith. Since the beginning of time, from the early Bible days, God has been talking about faith. And has been talking about faith. And he's constantly reminding us about faith. Throughout the Bible, and even in today's world, God wants us to increase and exercise our faith. Sometimes our faith is so weak because we are so tired and worn out. We are all tired and worn out sometimes because we have such pressing issues. We, our jobs is just keep going and going. And when we get home in the night, we are so tired. We can't even say, Lord... Our faith is weak sometimes, but we can pull on the strength of God. So we have to, we are living in a crazy world. Face it or not, believe it or not, it's a crazy world. When you look on the war right now that's going on, that's a crazy war. What, we, until now, we don't even know why they're fighting. That's crazy. We don't know why they are fighting. So we have to increase our faith, lift it up a notch, and put our hope in God. Not in ourselves, because our faith alone won't work. We have to ask God, increase my faith. As the Bible declares, without faith, it is impossible to please him. If you don't have faith, you can't please God. So if you have a little faith, it's good enough. But my encouragement to you and myself this morning, increase your faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So we have to increase it and increase it and increase it. Today we will look at four Ps. As in the alphabet, P, P as in Paul, Peter, P. We look at four Ps in the scripture. 
this scripture to demonstrate crazy faith. Crazy faith. Can these bones live? Number one. We have to recognize that there is power in knowing who God is. Before we do anything else, first things are first. We have to know who God is. And not only know who God is, we have to know who God is for ourselves individually. In Ezekiel 37 verse 3 it says, And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O oh Lord, you know. That's a very smart answer. Because Ezekiel could not never ever think, I would never ever think that these dry bones could live. But he said, Lord, you know. You know all things. Ezekiel had to look on God's track record. You have to look back in your life sometimes and see where God has taken you from, what he has brought you through, and then you'll recognize who God is. Ezekiel had to look on God's track record and know that God is the creator of all things. He also had to know that God is omniscient. God knows all things. We don't know. I don't know what's going to happen in the next two hours, but God knows all things because he is omniscient. We also have to know, Ezekiel knew, that he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Look on your forefathers. See their faith. See their belief. And know that he was, those guys, um, God himself, was a promise covenant or covenant keeper. As I said earlier, when God makes a covenant, he made a covenant with, with um, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he's the same God today. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same God. He's our God. Just like he was a God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We have to also know and I think Ezekiel did say that. <laughs> Ezekiel, um, he recognized that. Know that he is a God of Daniel in the lion's den. When we look back in the Bible, remember I say we have to constantly look back. See what he did. How is it that Daniel was in the lion's den? The lions were hungry because the scripture said they didn't feed it. And you know, when, when um, animals are hungry, they'll eat anything. So Daniel was in the lion's den, and the Lord was his deliverer. The mouth of the lions were shut. We also know that he is a God of the three Hebrew boys. Ezekiel must have heard about it. He must have read it in the past, because the scriptures were there. When the boys were in the fiery furnace, who is it that you're in the fire and you're not being burnt? There is no fire touching your skin. I think I preached this message some time ago. And we said Nebuchadnezzar looked in the fire and these men were not burned because he told them, his servants, Increase the fire, the flames to a certain degree, ten times more. And he put them in the, the fire furnace. And none of them, not even a hair on their hand or head was scorched or singed. And even Nebuchadnezzar said, I saw a fourth person looking like the Son of God. Nebuchadnezzar did not know God, but yet he saw because God revealed to him that these are my servants and they are protected. And Jesus was in the fire with them and they were not scorched. He was their sustainer. So Ezekiel had to look back on the track record of God. We can, there are so many stories in the Bible that we can look back on and see a good 
and how mighty and how powerful our God is. There's a Sunday school song that we used to sing. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Because he's a lily of the valley. He's the brightest morning star. He's the fairest of 10,000. Everybody has to know. Sister Diana knows that song. I hear her saying amen over there. <laughs> this other song, Awesome God, creator of all the earth, Awesome God, he's a ruler of the universe, everlasting father, never changing power, unmistakably, he's an awesome God, unmistakably, he's an awesome God. So when we look back on the history, when we look back on the track record of God, we know that unmistakably, He's an awesome God, and therefore, there is power in knowing who God is. You have to know God for yourself. You cannot live off my experience. I know my experience, but you have to know God for yourself. And when you look back on the things that he has saved you from and the things that he has brought you through, you cannot help but sin. Singing, awesome God, creator of all the earth. Awesome God is a ruler of the universe. Everlasting Father. Never, ever changing power. Unmistakably, is an awesome, awesome God. Jeremiah himself knew who God was. In Jeremiah 32 and verse 27, it says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything too hard for God? Is there anything too hard for God? Let me ask this over here. <laughs> Is there anything too hard for God? Is there anything too hard for God? Is there anything too hard for God? Absolutely not, because he's an awesome God. Ezekiel knew who God was, so we ought to know who our God is. We ought to know who God is. My second point is my second P. There's power in obedience. There is power in obedience. And verse 7 says, So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as, as I prophesied, there was a noise, and suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. And verse 8 says, And indeed, as I looked, and the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. He had to be obedient. Don't forget, he was mere man. He was a man like you and I. And he's, he, he, has, he had to have crazy faith to say, These bones, the Lord told him to prophesy. Speak to the bones. And he was obedient. There's a song that says, the title is Them Bones. And it says, Toe bone connected to the foot bone. And the foot bone connected to the heel bone. Heel bone connected to the ankle bone. Ankle bone connected to the skin bone. Skin bone connected to the knee bone. Knee bone connected to the thigh bone. Thigh bone connected to the hip bone. Hip bone connected to the backbone. Who has backbone? All of us. <laughs> backbone connected to the shoulder bone. And shoulder bone connected to the neck bone. 
So because he was obedient and he spoke the word, the Lord told him, speak the word. And he was obedient. And because he was obedient, immediately, and the scripture says, there was a noise. There was suddenly a rattling. Can you imagine? Because the, the scripture said the Lord told him to walk around the bones. Fill the, the valley, the land was filled with bones. I don't know how he did it. But can you imagine going to a graveyard? Come with me. I'm, I'm very graphic. <laughs> Go to a graveyard. And then you hear a noise, or, you know? And a rattling, suddenly a rattling. I would run. <laughs> I don't know about you. <laughs> but I would run. But Ezekiel, because he was obedient and he spoke the word of God, there was a noise and suddenly a rattling. And the bones came together. And as I said, all the bones connected, foot bone, neck bone, all the way from the, the toes, all the way to the head. All the bones are connected. That, ha that has to be crazy faith. Because look at it. Just, just imagine how powerful God is. The bones are there all dried. The bones are there maybe disjointed. Right? And look at it, look at it, just look at it for a moment. When the bones, there was a noise and the bones started rattling and getting, coming together. Can you imagine, I'm six feet tall. And if you have, if you have another person who is maybe four feet tall, my, right, my left leg, the right six feet leg, come on my thing. And then another piece Another person's four four <laughs> with four feet come and mind you would be walking and hopping, right? But all the bones, the right bones came together in the right place. And that's how powerful God is. And not only that, you remember I said earlier the scripture said the bones were very dry. But the Lord Himself said He was gonna put sinews in them flesh on it skin on it god god is mighty i don't know i don't know about you but when i look on god i'm telling you god is mighty he's an awesome god can these bones live prophesy God told them, prophesy. There comes a time in our lives when things are so hard. We have to speak to our situation. We have to speak to our situation. This other song says, this is the sound of dry bones rattling. This is a praise that make a dead man walk again. Make, that make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm going to live. I'm going to live again. This is the sound of dry bones rattling. Is your situation dead today? Whatever it is. You, 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 in yourself, you say, Lord, this is impossible. This cannot work. But God says, can these bones live? And I just love what Ezekiel said. Oh, Lord. You know. He didn't say, I know. But he said, Lord, you know. And he looked back on the track record. Delayed obedience is disobedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience. Therefore, Ezekiel did not hesitate in being obedient to God's voice. And as the scripture says, so I prophesied and I was, as I was commanded, noise suddenly a rattling. We too need to be obedient to God's voice and prophesy. Speak to your situation. Whatever it is, all of us have situations that are impossible. Sometimes you might have been to the doctor 
and the doctor give you a bad report. But you have to speak to your situation. So you have to quote the scripture and say, the Lord is my healer. By your stripes I'm healed. You may not feel like it, but you are, have to just speak it. You have to speak it. Prophesy over yourself. These bones, these situations can live again. There is hope. There is hope. The third point. There is power in speaking the word of God. There is power in speaking the word of God. It's not about my words. Do you recognize when in the beginning, when God created the heaven and the earth, what did he do? He spoke. He said, let there be, let there be, let there be. He didn't put his hand on anything. He said, let there be. The only thing he put his hand on was in the end. When he made man, he, remember he formed man out of the dirt with his own hands. But everything that he made, he spoke it into being and he said, everything was good. So there's power in speaking the word of God. And we see that in verse 9 and verse 10. Verse 9 says, Also he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. He was obedient again. He says, so I prophesied as, as he commanded me. And the breath came into them. And they lived and stood up on their feet. An exceedingly great army. Remember in the, in the earlier scripture it says that yes, he will put sinews on them. He will put flesh on them. And the bones will get together. But there was no life. But the Lord told him again, speak the word of God and say, come from the four winds, east, west, north, south, and tell, command the wind to breathe on those bodies that they may live again. There comes a time in our, in our lives that we have to speak. Solomon said there's a time to be silent and there's a time to speak. And the best thing you could ever do is speak the word of God over your situation. My words may not mean anything, but when you speak the word of God over your situation, things will change. Things will change. Words are not effective until they are spoken. It doesn't how much you think about the words inside of your heart. If you don't say it, it's not effective. If you're going to call me, if I'm in the back of the church and you want to say, Brother Glenn, come here, and you don't move your mouth and just stand here in your mind and say, Brother Glenn, come here, in your mind now, you know. Brother Glenn, come here. Come here. If I don't hear that spoken word, I will not move. I will not come. So words that are not spoken are not effective. So we have to speak the word of God and we have to prophesy. Prophecy to the dead. Prophesy to the dead bones. And impossible to the dead and impossible situations in your life. It seems as if it's over, but God is saying this morning it is not over until it's over. There are some situations in your life that you say it doesn't make any sense. I give up. I quit. I stop praying. But God is saying to you this morning it's not over until it's over. 
Because he has a last say. Remember I said in the first, my first point, God knows all things. And because he knows all things, when he tells us to do something, we have to be obedient to his word. And when we're obedient, he will do what no one can do. And not only to be obedient, but we have to speak the word of God. We have to speak it over our lives, over our situations, over our family. Let me see all the hands of those. You're here and you have an impossible situation looking on right now. I can put up two hands. Because all of us have to go through the same thing, the same challenges I face, you face. It, you may face it in a different form. But we all go through our, our, our situations and our impossible situation. And I say, God, I don't think you're going to do this. Have you ever noticed that sometimes, sometimes I say to myself, yes, God, you can do it, but will you do it for me? <laughs> I know God is powerful and he can do anything, but will you do it for me? Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I ask God some questions sometimes. Lord, what about me? What about me? But he knows all things. And because he knows all things, we can trust him. Remember the scripture says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. I don't know about you, but I have some own understanding inside of me. I, I, I'm like, if it's not scientifically proven, I don't know if I'll believe. It has never been done before, so I don't know if I'll believe. But lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct. You know, some of us don't like to be directed or led. We like to have our own way. But trust in him lean on him and he will direct our path somebody needs to hear that lean on him and he will direct your path he will answer you he will speak because he spoke to Ezekiel he gave him a vision and he said this is it speak the word and things will change my number fourth, number four. There's power in hope. There is power in hope. And we see that in the scripture in verse 11. And he said, Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say, Our bones are dry, our hope is lost. Have you ever been hopeless? Have you ever felt like your hope is lost? And we ourselves are yet cut off. Number 12 says, Therefore, and this is God speaking to Ezekiel, Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord your God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. 13. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. When I have opened your eyes, opened your graves, O oh, my people, and brought you up from the graves. Listen to what verse 14 says. I, this is God speaking, still speaking. I will put my spirit in you and, and you shall live. And I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. 
we can have hope in God. Because he says, he told the, the, the Israelites, he told Ezekiel, remember Ezekiel was a prophet and he said, prophesy to my people that I will, I will, I will restore you. Even the dead things I can bring back to life. I can resurrect things. I can change things. It's not about the dry bones per se he was talking about. He gave him a vision to say this. The house of Israel are like the bones that are dead. Because they remember they were in exile and everything. And everything just went dead. And it seemed as if everything was dead. But God made a promise to them. He says, I will do. I will make you live again. I will make things happen again. And then you will know that I am the Lord, your God. When God does something, he's doing it to, to let you recognize that, look, I'm doing it on behalf of you individually and collectively. I'm doing it on behalf of you. And then you'll recognize that he is our God. The psalmist says, Why are so don't cast on my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. Put your hope in God. Put your hope in God. Not in yourself. Some trust in chariots. Some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. These verses God explained to him. From verse 11 to 14. And I have three points here. The first thing he says. These bones are the whole house of Israel. Ezekiel might have understood that the bones in his vision might have, sorry, Ezekiel might have understood that the bones in his vision represented his people. Yet, it might have sur surprised him when God revealed they were represented, that it represented the whole house of Israel. Not only those from the kingdom, not only those from the kingdom of Judah. So when God was saying to him, I'm not only going to restore your people here in your village, in your town, I'm going to restore the whole entire Israel because God loves Israel and he made a covenant with them and that the bones and lives will be restored. Number two says, our bones are dry, our hope is lost, and we ourselves are cut off. Sometimes you feel like you're cut off. The house of Israel had reasons to say this. Both those from the south and the north, their only hope for life and restoration was in God. That was their only hope. They, they could go nowhere else, but that was their hope in God, those from the north and those from the south. And wherever you are, your hope should be in God. Three says, our hope is lost. These were the words of despondency, born of the realization of the desolation. It was accurate. Do you know sometimes you say our hope is lost, that's accurate. That's a fact. We feel hopeless sometimes. And that's a fact. Don't walk around like we're so macho and nothing hit us and nothing can take us down. I'm telling you sometimes we're despondent, sometimes we're discouraged. And that's an accurate statement. They felt hopeless and lost. But I'm just glad for this songwriter. It says, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust. I dare not trust in the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, a solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. 
All of the ground is sinking sand. We can and should put our hope in God. Why? You may ask, why should I put my hope in God? Why? I've been praying for so long and he's not answering. Have you ever, ever, ever been praying and it's like, the Lord is not even here and it, it, it reaches the ceiling and it just bounces right back? I've prayed several prayers. I haven't seen any answer yet. But my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. And on Christ, a solid rock, I will stand. When I don't understand it, I will stand. When I don't know what is happening, I will stand. When I don't know what's going on, I will stand. On Christ, a solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Where else could I go? Who else can I hold on to? If I try to hold on to you, you're trying to hold on to somebody for yourself. So on Christ, a solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. It brings me to one of my most favorite songs, which has become one of my most favorite we can and should put our hope in God. And I ask, why? Because Jesus, you are able. What can't you do, Jesus? Creator of the universe, what can't you do? What can't you do, Jesus? Name above every name, every other name. What can't you change? What can't you change, Jesus? You are able. That's the best part about it. He's able. <laughs> He's able. Great and mighty God, you are able. Jesus, there's nothing that you cannot do and there's nothing that you cannot change. There's nothing you cannot turn around. Can these bones live? He's able. You are able. Great and mighty God, I put my trust in you. When I don't understand, I put my trust in you. When I don't see the answers, I put my trust in you. Because you are able, great and mighty God. You are able. You are able. What can't you do? What can't you change? What can't you turn around? Lord, increase my faith to believe the unexpected things, the things that are impossible, increase my faith to believe you are able. You are able. You are able. You know, two week, last week, I was walking down the highway on a Sunday morning. I go for a walk sometimes. And I'm saying... Driving on the highway going home in the days. There are some light poles that they put in, some new ones, take all the smaller ones and put the bigger ones. And walking now, walking side by the, the light pole. And when I recognize, and I say, I didn't realize that these poles, these poles are so big, I can hardly put my hands around them. And the closer you get to God, the bigger you'll recognize he is. So this morning I'm saying to you, he's able. Lift your faith. Increase your faith. Get closer to him and you'll recognize. If you just do a drive-by, you'll see the, the, the poles, the light poles look so small. But when you stop and stand beside it, you'll recognize how big the light pole is. And when you stop and be in the presence of the Lord, you'll recognize how big he is. Because our God is big and he's mighty and he's powerful and there's nothing that he cannot do and there's nothing that he cannot change and there's nothing that he cannot turn around. I don't know about you this morning. How is your faith? What does it look like to live by faith and have crazy faith? We have to expect the unexpected. We have to expect the unexpected. 
A lot of us live by traditions because it used to go this way. When I was growing up, it ought to go it that way. Now, no, seasons change. God remains constant, but things will change and seasons will change. If we look throughout the Bible, he will tell Ezekiel, speak to the bones. You go into another section, he will tell them to do something else. So whatever season you are in, just recognize that God is in that season with you. We all are in different seasons in our lives. <laughs> Let me say this this morning. Constantly isn't the same as perfection. To be constant doesn't mean you're perfect. The people in the Hall of Fame in Hebrews 11 they had plenty blunders and plenty mess up. They all did. We all do. I don't know about you, but I do. But one thing that remained is that their faith remained constant. And that's what one of the common denominators in, in the book of Farm Hebrews. Their faith, they all had faith. And this morning, the Lord is reminding us, increase your faith. These are the days where our faith has to be increased. We can't, we can't live on yesterday's faith. We're living in serious times. We're living in challenging times. So therefore, we ought to increase and lift up our faith. We have to do that. We have to live by faith. And that is why in Hebrews 11 and verse 1 it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. We live by faith, not by sight. Ezekiel had to live by faith. Those dry bones will never live. But because he believed that God was able to, God doesn't take away the mystery by explaining it. He doesn't take away the pain by dismissing it. But he offers his presence in the midst of it. Do you know what, when God is in the midst of your trouble, you feel hope, you feel safe, you feel covered because God is with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. That is crazy faith. Ezekiel had to have crazy faith to believe that these very bones, very dry bones, could live. How is your faith this morning? Ask your neighbor, how is your faith? I don't hear a word. <laughs> how is your faith? Help us, Lord. Please remember this morning. These four things. There's power in knowing who God is. Number two, there's power in obedience. And number three, there's power in speaking the word of God. And number four, there is power in hope. So we ought to have hope in God. Because on Christ, the solid rock we stand, and all other ground. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. So before closing today, let me encourage you that we too can exercise our faith and we can increase our faith. When somebody is in training, an athlete, the more they train, the better they get at it. The more they train, the better they get at it. The first day, if you're going to go and try to start to exercise, the first day you go out, when you come back, you can hardly walk. <laughs> but the second day you go out, you know, your legs are getting stronger and you keep going and you keep going and they get better at it. I'm saying to you this morning, exercise your faith. Increase your faith. Today, I don't know what you are facing. 
I don't know what you're experiencing. But we're all going through. We're all going through something. But believe that God is there with you. God is with you. You may be at the end of your rope. You may feel like, well, this is it. I'm quitting. I'm giving up. I'm saying, you're saying, maybe saying this morning, it's over. There is no hope. But I'm here to encourage you, there is hope. Don't quit. Don't give up. Just wait a little while longer. I was saying to them in prayer meeting yesterday, waiting is, a, I think waiting is one of the hardest process. But wait on the Lord and be of good courage. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. I encourage you this morning, whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, 